Okay, yesterday we looked at different uh, page formats and, and document setups. So we're going to start our day today by going to File, New. And my computer's responding a little bit slowly today. Um, and uh, what I want to see on your page is a letter size document, meaning 8.5 by 11, in uh, landscape format. And we're going to call this pencil because we're going to draw a pencil today. Okay, once you have this piece of paper up on the screen, we're ready to start drawing on it. We're going to draw a pencil using some of the basic shape tools. Uh, you can get much more complicated with the drawing, but we're going to start with just some real basic things. Now, when we did our logo projects, we put uh, graph paper onto um, our design, put our designs onto graph paper, uh, so it would all be neat and even. We can do the same thing here. We can bring up a piece of graph paper that makes uh, drawing some things easier. So hit control quote mark next to the enter key on your keyboard and it's going to bring up a piece of graph paper. You can also go to view at the top and go to um, go down to show grid is what it'll say when there is no grid. And you can also see the keyboard shortcut over here to the right where it says control quote mark. Now let's do some actual drawing. We're going to use some basic shape tools and we're going to start out really easy, really basic. We're going to start with a rectangle tool and we're going to use the grid on our paper to start making a rectangle that is about one inch tall and then we're going to go about one, two, three, four, five, six inches long. And you can um, just use the lines there to make sure it's all lined up. Or if you go to view, snap to grid, it will stay automatically lined up to your grid. Okay, so go ahead and draw that quickly. Okay, once that shape is drawn, we're actually going to draw the same shape again, but a little bit smaller, right on top, about half an inch big, same length. And that's going to make our pencil look like it has some dimension to it. It looks like it's um, kind of a, um, one of those pencils that are not supposed to roll off your table, has sides to it. Go ahead and do that real quick. It doesn't matter if your rectangles are the the right size here. You could have this middle rectangle a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller, it doesn't really matter. We're just going to try and stack up some shapes to make a drawing. So I'm going to select both of these shapes and I want to change some colors on them. Um, first thing though, I want to actually get rid of the black stroke. Most of the time you want to get rid of the black stroke because it looks a little cartoonish. It looks a little too much out of the box. So we want it to, we want to uh, use either different colored strokes or no stroke at all. For this drawing, I'm actually going to turn the strokes off. So I'm going to have the black here on top, and then I'm going to hit the red slash to turn the stroke off. And now that we have the black strokes turned off, we need to put some color on it so we can tell that it's going to be a pencil. If I click off, you can see that I almost lose that shape just because it's white and I lose it on the background. Um, so I'm going to start off with the larger rectangle, which is on the bottom of my stack right now. And I'm going to go over to the swatches panel. These are the panels over here. And I'm going to click on the swatches panel and pull it out. Now, if your swatch panel is missing, you can go up to Window and find a whole listing of all the panels that are available in Illustrator. So you can go in there and locate your swatches panel and click on it. Now, our default swatches um, are going to work for us here. But if you wanted some other swatches or other color sets, you can click in the lower left-hand corner of the swatches panel and find whole listings of other colors. Things like skin tones and patterns, neutral colors, metals, and that kind of thing. So I'm going to make my large rectangle here. I'm going to click kind of this orangish color here. Now, I made a mistake here. Do you see what happened? My stroke was still on top, so that means that it turned the stroke that orangish color. To switch your stroke color to your fill color, you can click this little arrow here, which switches the two. Now that makes my stroke white, so I need to again set my stroke at none by hitting the red slash. And then I'm going to take the smaller rectangle, and I'm going to learn from my mistake. I'm going to make sure that my fill color is on top. Back to my swatches panel. Ignore the color panel when it pops up. And I'm going to pick a slightly different orangish color. I think this one here uh, might look nice. Or maybe I'll go yellow. Yeah, I think I'm going to go about right there. 
So I'm not real happy with this color here. It's a little too orange for me. So I want to customize this color a bit. So I'm going to click on that shape and I'm going to go down to my color picker down here on the, on the bottom of my toolbar. And I'm going to double click on my fill color and I can see that um, I have a lot more control of my color here. The swatches panel can get you started, but the color picker really lets you customize your color. Now I kind of call, call the upper 20% of the color picker here, this upper part, this upper corner, kind of the danger zone. When you're in that area, your color is oftentimes oversaturated and it can look a little too candy and if you use too many of those colors, your whole drawing kind of just looks too bright and not very sophisticated. Um, so we want to actually nudge that down a little bit. You can also nudge it toward yellow if you want and you see that the color shows up right here. So I'm going to customize my color a bit so it looks better with um, the yellowish orange of the other rectangle. Okay, And then once I'm happy with it, I click OK. And now I've got a little bit more of a sophisticated color scheme going on with my drawing. Go ahead and adjust the color on your drawing. So we've got a pretty good looking barrel to our pencil now. Let's start adding some details. To create these rectangles, we clicked and we dragged. We're going to do something a little bit different here. We're going to click on the, this rectangle tool and go down to the rounded rectangle tool. Go ahead and locate that tool. And then instead of clicking and dragging with this one, we're going to just click once. So I've gone over here to the right side of my pencil and I'm going up to the very top right corner and I'm going to click just once. And then that allows me to actually type in a few measurements. This works for all the different tools here uh, hidden underneath that rectangle tool. If you click once, you can type in these different measurements. So uh, for this, we're actually going to make the eraser here. And we want it to be one inch by one inch. Um, the question, though, is the corner radius. What do we do with the corner radius? Uh, the corner radius tells me how rounded each corner is. So for instance, if I made a one inch by one inch and each corner was rounded half an inch, that half inch on each corner would turn the whole thing into a circle. So we don't want our corner radius to be too big, but we do want it to be rounded enough for what we want to do. I think if we make our corner radius uh, a quarter of an inch, 0.25 inches, and click OK, we'll get a pretty good looking shape for our uh, eraser. Go ahead and do that. Okay, you can see that I've also changed the color of my eraser uh, to a sort of pinkish color. You can go ahead and take a moment to do that. Pause the video if you need to. And I'm going to add on um, some metal brackets using that rounded rectangle to hold my eraser on. Um, I'm going to turn my snap off at this point. So if you've done uh, the view snap to grid, you're going to go back to view and go down to snap to grid again so our metal brackets that we make to hold our eraser don't get uh, out of whack. That's view snap to grid. And then we're going to go back to our rounded rectangle tool and we're going to click once and type in some new measurements. Our height this time, instead of being 1 inch, we're going to make it 1.25 inches. I'm sorry, our width, our height is going to be 1.25. Our width is going to just be a quarter of an inch, 0.25 inches. And our corner radius is going to be the same as well, 0.25 inches. Okay, so once you have those measurements in, go ahead and click OK and you get a rounded shape to it. Um, I'm going to change that rounded shape to a grayish color right out of my swatch. Now if you wanted to get fancy with this, you could uh, put things like different gradients and things on this. You can get much more complicated, but since this is a beginner uh, session, we're not going to um, do much in the way of gradients. Just a simple gray color. And I'm going to zoom in on this a bit by grabbing my zoom tool, which is the bottom of my toolbar, and then I draw a box around the area that I want to zoom into, and then when I let go, it zooms right into it. Go ahead and zoom into the end of your pencil. So we're going to take this bracket and we're going to actually turn it into three brackets. And I want to show you a couple of different ways to copy a shape in Illustrator. Most things with Adobe programs, there are five, ten different ways to do the exact same thing. I could click on this guy here and go to Edit, Copy, and Edit, Paste, which we're not going to do. That's the obvious answer. 
The one that I like to use the most is to actually hold down the Alt key on your keyboard, and then I actually just click on this using my black arrow, my selection arrow, uh, hold down Alt, and I drag out a second copy, and it magically creates an additional copy. Go ahead and try that. Hold down Alt and drag out an additional copy. Now another way uh, to create an additional copy is actually using the Layers panel. The Layers panel is near the bottom of your Panels bar, <coughs> over here on the right, excuse me. So I'm going to click on that, and I like to pull out the panels that I'm working on. So I'm going to pull that out, and this is our Layers panel. Go ahead and locate that. So layers in Illustrator work like folders. Here I've got something called Layer 1, and you can see there's a little arrow next to it. And if you click on that down arrow, all of the shapes that we've drawn so far show up inside that folder, that layer. Okay? And they're called paths in Illustrator. Any kind of shape that you draw is called a path most of the time. And as I click on the different shapes in the drawing area, you'll notice that a little blue dot changes over here on the right. I can also click here on the right and you'll see that the selection box goes around the shape that I clicked, clicked on. So this is how you can use the layers panel to uh, locate different parts of your drawing. Now we just have a few shapes in this case, but you can see if we had a more complicated drawing, uh, this would be a good way to try and figure out where our different shapes are. Um, all of the panels, or just about all the panels in Illustrator and in Photoshop as well, have a new button and a trash button. By dragging to the trash, we would, of course, delete things. By clicking on the new button, we would create a new layer. But what I can do also is copy shapes. So if I can locate this rounded rectangle that we've drawn, that is our metal bracket, you can see that a little blue dot shows up on the right hand side. By the way, if I had a layer two, it would be red. It changes this little blue dot, changes to other colors based on what layer it's on. But we're only in layer one, so it's blue. So that means that when I have that selected, that's that shape there in the layers panel. So I'm going to click on it, and I'm actually going to drag it down to the new layer icon, and it's going to duplicate itself right on top of itself. In the drawing area, it doesn't look like anything has happened, but you can see that I have three metal brackets here in the Layers panel. So I'm going to click on this and drag it to the right, and you can see that I've got three metal brackets. Go ahead and do that. Okay, so this end of the pencil is looking pretty good. That's about how we want it to look. So we're going to go to the other end of the pencil. So whatever tool that I'm on, I can be on the pen tool, I can be on the pencil tool, shape tool, in this case, I'm on the black arrow of the selection tool. If I hit spacebar, I get this grabber hand, and I can click and just move my drawing over until I get to the other end of the pencil. Now I want to click out in the white space, just because I want to make sure that there's nothing selected for this next step. I'm going to use the pen tool, and uh, on our next lesson, we'll actually spend a lot of time with the pen tool. But what the pen tool does is it creates custom shapes by clicking, 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 and then going around to the original shape. It actually does much more than that, but that's the basics of what it does. And we're going to use that to put a point on our pencil. So let me delete that shape there. And I'm going to go right exactly on this anchor um, of the rectangle, and I'm going to click, and then I'm going to come out here to somewhere about the middle, just that little green smart guide will tell me that I'm lined up to the middle and click and then I'm going to go down to this corner here and click now this is very very important watch this part I need to bring this all the way back around to make a complete closed shape and I want you guys to be in the habit of making complete closed shapes here as beginners and you can see that I've got a complete closed shape because my cursor changes I get a little round circle where my cursor is there um, and I click and I've got a complete closed triangular shape and I'm going to make it a sort of wood color because that's going to be uh, the sharpened part of my pencil. Go ahead and get that far. Last thing we want to do is take that same pen uh, that same pen tool and put a tip to our pencil so you want to click off of the pencil and then get your pen tool and then I'm going to click again go to the tip, click again, go to the tip, click again, and then finish the shape off, complete closed shape. 
And I'm going to change that to a sort of black color to be our pencil lead. Now that we've drawn our pencil, um, we see it as a single object. It's a bunch of shapes that are stacked up one on top of the other, and we see it as a single object. But Illustrator doesn't know that it's a single object. So if I try and you know click on it and drag it, I'm just dragging individual little shapes. We can actually group these together to make Illustrator know that it's an object by itself. So if I take the black arrow tool and draw a big box around all of the little shapes there, I can right click and go to group and now Illustrator understands that these objects work together. I can rotate them together, I can shrink them together or make them bigger together. I can also do something with my symbols panel, which is this panel here, looks like a, a little playing card. And there's some pre-made shapes there in the symbols panel, which some of you may have uh, played with a little bit. If I take my pencil and I can drag it into the symbols panel, and tell Illustrator I'm saving it as a symbol. Just click OK. And I can actually pull out additional pencils because they're all there as the symbol. There are other things that you can do at the symbol panel. Um, you can adjust all the colors at the same time, some other things that we might look at in the future. Uh, I find a lot of students like to use the symbol sprayer. So if I click on the symbol sprayer and pick a symbol, I can actually spray out a bunch of symbols. Okay, and that's kind of fun to do. So those are some of the things that you can do with some of your basic drawings um, when you're working in Illustrator.